In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Welcome, as we gather together in the Spirit for today's online worship. Today is Trinity Sunday, a day when we celebrate the wonder and mystery of the God who is known to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a day to return to the heart of our faith to who God is and who Jesus calls us to be as his church. This week, we asked you for one word that you would use to describe God. And the words that you've shared encompass the whole breadth of who God is, from the powerful creator and sustainer of the whole universe to the one who knows us and loves us personally and intimately, even in our fears and failures. So we begin our service, asking for the Father's forgiveness, for those ways in which we so often fail him, trusting in the incredible grace and love shown to us in his Son, and made real to us by the power of the Spirit. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And here's today's collect, the special prayer for Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may worship you truly, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible readings read for us by Emmy and Sue. The reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. And live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. A Gospel reading according to Matthew 28, chapters 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Whenever an important leader or politician comes to the end of their career, something which happens all too frequently these days, there is one question that the press always wants to ask. What will be their legacy? I wonder, depending on where you are in your life, whether you've ever asked yourself a similar question, perhaps when you came to the end of a particular role, or for some of us, when you were approaching retirement, or perhaps you've asked the same question, but in a different context when thinking about family. What values and principles do I want to pass on to my children? What will my legacy be to them? In today's gospel reading, the author, Matthew, gives us his account of Jesus' final words to his disciples before ascending to the Father. 
These words are all about Jesus' legacy and the way that they should continue it. And more than that, begin a new task, a new mission because of it. These very simple instructions create a blueprint for the disciples' future ministry. Make disciples, baptize them, live out my teachings. I am with you. Without the dedication of those first disciples to these instructions, the church just would not exist today. This is the mission that they lived and breathed through every waking minute, motivated by Christ's presence with them. This was a cause that they would live for, and in the case of most, if not all of them, die for, all for the love of God and the love of people. Because they really, truly believed that this was the very best possible way to live and the path to the realisation of God's dream for the world, the kingdom of heaven. Today, we are their legacy, along with all those followers of Jesus throughout history who have discipled others and taught the way of Jesus, the way of life, love, justice and peace. But more than that, the baton is now ours to hold. Christ's legacy, which became their legacy, is now our legacy. And in these challenging times in which we live, the question for us is, what will we do with it? Make disciples, baptise them, live out my teachings. I am with you. Perhaps more challenging even than what Jesus did say in the Great Commission is what he didn't say. He didn't instruct them to establish an institutional church structure. He didn't tell them to build church buildings with extravagant architecture. He didn't even tell them to establish a pattern of Sunday services with a variety of musical styles and liturgies. He told them, to make disciples. Now, I'm not saying that the structure of the church, our buildings and our worship aren't important. But what I am saying is that there are means rather than the end, a vehicle rather than the destination, an outworking of our purpose, which should never distract us from the heart of Jesus' legacy itself. Make disciples. Baptise them. Live out my teachings. I am with you. In the light of all we're going through with COVID-19, one of the key tasks of the church is for us to listen to what God's Spirit is saying to us. How is God prompting us? How is God at work in our world? And what is God calling us to do in response? One of the most helpful ways for any group or organisation to respond to a crisis is to return to their core purpose, to remind ourselves of what we're about, to push aside all the peripheral concerns and the stuff that we've built up around us. To do so takes real courage, because if we're honest, we grow to really love what we're familiar with our preferred style of worship, our routine, our groups and circles of friends. The impulse when we go through trauma, through a crisis, is to want to lean on the familiar, to strengthen ourselves with the hope that the things we know and love will soon be able to return to normal. And we could do that now. When the lockdown's over, we could do our best to bring everything back together as best we can, just the way it was before. But as your ministry area leader, I want to be brave with you this morning and honest, because I really believe that the Holy Spirit is calling us with a greater opportunity. The opportunity to renew the heart of our faith, the heart of our purpose, as Christ's church. The opportunity to rebuild together, not for the sake of our own legacy, 
with all that we loved about church before, but for the sake of Jesus's legacy, to realize his dream for our community, our city, and our nation. Make disciples, baptize them, live out my teachings. I am with you always. Amen. We bring our prayers, all we are and all we have, to God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We bring before you, our God, the church in all its beauty and flaws. Give us strength to speak up for truth and justice. Guide our leaders at this time. Thinking especially of Bishop Cherry and all those both lay and ordained who hold us together. May we be a community of faith, love and peace, mirroring the blessed Trinity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, our God, the brokenness of our age and our culture, renewing us a commitment to community and mutual trust. May all those who suffer due to the evils of racism and discrimination know and find justice. Soften the hearts and call to repentance those that hate, that they may see the beauty of all you have created. Help us cultivate and encourage good in our society. Guide Boris and all our local leaders to go in these ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you our God, our children and young people, and all those who care for them. As schools prepare to reopen, may you grant fortitude and wisdom to our school leaders, teachers and staff. May all children find and know safety and security. Protect those who are vulnerable and suffer physically and mentally at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, our God, those who we hold in need, victims of debt, poverty, abuse, hunger, sickness, mental anguish, and those who have no one to turn to, as well as all those who work tirelessly to support them. We take a moment to name in our hearts or out loud those dear to us. Grant them sanctuary and peace and your healing and your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, our God, those who have died in the faith and now will see you face to face. Those whom death speaks fear, especially in this time of pandemic. And may those whose death is close find comfort in your everlasting arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you our God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day and be imitators of your light, life and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we draw our prayers to a close, joining together in the Lord's Prayer, either saying it loud or silently in your own heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you.
for joining us for today's service. Whether you're a regular member of our ministry area family or are with us for the first time today. After this morning's service, beginning at around 11, we're having a virtual social using the software Zoom. You can find the details for that either in today's email newsletter or in our private Facebook group. Or you can drop us a private message and we'll send them to you. Do join us for that if you can. A reminder as well to please continue to give if you're able towards the work of our ministry area to help us to continue all we're doing. Whatever platform you're using, there's a link to give online attached to this service. And finally, as always, if there's anything at all that we can do to help, if you could do with some practical support or just someone to talk to, then do drop us a line. A final prayer of blessing as we finish today's service. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.